Now then, welcome back to Shedlock 2000's garage of many interesting things. Um, like I mentioned in the last video, I'm, I'm sort of a bit busy at the moment with some academic work that is requiring quite a bit of my attention. And as a, as a consequence, I haven't been able to sort of build longer videos, which is my one. So what I've tried to do and this is the second one of them is I've, I've tried to make a very uh, simplistic video in, in the sense of not very complicated to edit because the editing normally takes longer than actually putting the thing together so I'm trying to make a series of shorter sort of videos that I can just get on with and, and publish if you see what I mean and this is going to be another one of them uh, now you'll remember a couple of a couple of weeks ago I did ask you if there was anything you wanted me to cover uh, and, and one of the things that was mentioned to me was how do I fill up the DEF on my car what's the best way to go about doing it and and so that's what this video is going to be now uh, I am not a genius in in modern day diesel engines and and I, I have got a degree in diesel engineering I'm a journeyman diesel engineer believe it or not but <laughs> when i did my diesel engineering i was uh, i used to build engines massive engines for a company called merlees blackstone that don't exist anymore now it was in hazel grove it were a big spot and uh, we made some of the world's largest diesel engines massive great things they were but it was back in the early 90s and technology in diesel engines hadn't really come along I mean it had some material technology and injector technology and all that kind of stuff had happened but broadly speaking it, they weren't anywhere near as complicated as they are now and uh, and what I know about diesel exhaust fluid and and regenerating things is, is very minimal I don't know very much at all to be honest with you but I'll try and make do what I do know uh, anyway, uh, DEF is a is a basically it's it's cow pee or pig pee or something. It's a it's a urea, um, and it's mixed with water, sixty five and a half percent to thirty four and a half percent or something very close to that. Um, and and what it is is it's a fluid uh, that, that the vehicle uses to convert some noxious gases that's produced by the engine into less noxious gases now modern day diesel engines uh, are usually over oxygenated uh, that means they use a bit more oxygen than they would normally need to, to to do the burning and the reason for that is because they're trying to reduce the soot content of the exhausts <laughs> it's a very long story is this but anyway so what happens is you've got too much oxygen too much oxygen in your inlet plus the process of combustion uh, develops these things called nitrogen oxides and they're often known as NOx because there's different kinds of oxides um, and so basically the urea is a mechanism of squirting this fluid into the catalytic converter uh, and it converts these NOxes or NOx and multiple nitrogen oxides into um, basically water and, and non-harmful nitrogen um, dihydrogen di, di, diatomic nitrogen uh, N2 so uh, the point of this is that what comes out of your tailpipe is, is harmless stuff 
But DEF isn't quite as simple as that because there are problems with using it. Yeah, sure, sure you load it up and it fits somewhere in here, really. Um, and then the car squirts it into the exo into the catalytic converter. But you can only do that uh, with liquid DEF, and it can only do that when the catalytic converter has reached a certain temperature point, which sort of permits this stuff to go on. One of the problems with running these modern day diesels on short journeys is that the car never gets warm and then this injection system is interrupted or, or ceases to happen. Uh, so that's the first problem. The second problem, especially for us out here, is that DEF, diesel exhaust fluid, uh, this urea stuff, um, actually freezes at minus 11. And it's not far off mine well, that turn Gary Dieter on here because obviously I wanted DEF to be liquid and whatever but in, this, in Canada it's minus 11 for half a year <laughs> especially where we live so within this tank which is somewhere in here within this tank are a bunch of heat, little eaters and then there's some heated lines and, and it's also in close proximity to the exhaust so that the exhaust uh, surplus exhaust uh, heat can can sort of help melt the fluids as well and def isn't the best subject material in the world for certain kinds of materials so it's quite corrosive to to mild steel and aluminium so these tanks and lines and all these other sorts of things have to be made out of the right kind of material so that it doesn't, doesn't turn into a big ball of mess um so what i'm trying to say is that this this def system although all we have to do as owners is fill it up follow the instructions inside which i'll go over next uh all we've got to do is fill it up but it's actually quite a complex procedure because there are certain parameters that need to be met for this to work efficiently and you will notice uh, a couple of things happen one you might notice warnings on your dashboard that say your diesel exhaust fluid is of insufficient quality and then sometimes you might you, you might have to take it on a run uh, to, to make sure it's operating temperature so that this process of uh, diesel exhaust fluid injection can can specific what do they call it specific something something or the SVG or something um, uh, or SVC or something so anyway it's a process whereby it's a very specific sort of catalytic reaction and that's basically what happens when you squirt in these uh, this DEF into the catalyst and that's that basically so let's let's crack on right so the first thing to do is to switch on your ignition which you do obviously by uh, by pressing the button and having your foot off the brake um, and uh, then you're going to clear these codes I'm, my door's open so a couple of codes have popped up um, warnings not codes uh, and then you just cycle across here to the bit that says vehicle information there we are and you want to scroll down to where it says next service and when you click on that uh, it'll tell you here how many miles you've got left to the rain you know to, to, to before your uh, DEF tank is empty and uh, you've also got here how much you'll need uh, to put in to, to sort of fill it up uh, now it is very important they tell me not to overfill it and I think there are two reasons for this one it really confuses the computer and it gets very uptight and upset with itself and the second reason is because it makes a mess here you can see I've got two examples of, of purchased DEF these are both from Volkswagen because I live 300 and something miles away from the local dealer uh, and so uh, I bought these ones because these these uh, exist in the town at the right sort of at the, at the, uh, they exist here in Lethbridge and I can get them now you see here uh, you can see their ISO 22241-1 uh, that tells you that it's the right quality and this is the same um, this is the same stuff. It's called AdBlue or DEF. AdBlue is for the Australians. Uh, we tend to call it DEF up here. Uh, now, I bought these specifically for the purposes of this video um, because I actually already have this bottle on the right hand side and I never buy that bottle on the left hand side, that gall two gallon thing, because um, I actually go to one of the pumps at the, the UFA uh, place, which is a United. I don't know, farming association or something like that it is. Um, 
and they've got a pump there and their product meets ISO 22241 as well now the reason I'm showing you this is because this particular bottle this little one on the right hand side this chap here uh, the way I fill my DEF up is that I cut a hole in the bottom of this this bottle on the right and then I use uh, that, that, that as a funnel and a, as a measuring device now you'll see that it contains 1.89 litres can I zoom in on there 1.89 litres which is a sort of half a gallon it says here but that's not half a gallon it's half an American gallon and uh, and it, it doesn't sort of cross over but I use that as a, as a sort of a very roughly a two litre measuring jug and the reason for that is because as you've seen in the the earlier clip you'll need to measure how much goes in uh, to your vehicle now I'm just going to spin this round and what you're looking for on the vehicle is this and you can see it says add blue and DEF on it uh, and it sits sort of as we approach the car it sits sort of nestled in the uh, I don't know what you call that really the sort of what's left of the inner wing <laughs> the inner wing affair so there you are that's what you're looking for this DEF affair uh, and it sits right here now the problem one of the problems with def is that it uh it tends to crystallize because uh urea actually does form like this crystalline structure so if you spill it you end up with this thin crystalline mess all over your car one of the other problems is that when you fill in this and if you spill any in here is a nightmare to get out uh, but it also crystallizes and it can make this top quite difficult to get off and that is why they've given you this little bit of a three eighths uh, top to it so you can put in a ratchet with your with your three eighths drive on mine i never put mine on that tight but you can see it just pops in there push it in and you can twist it off um and that's how you get that cap off now mine's not that tight i can just uh, undo mine with my fingers and then you end up left with uh what you see here which is uh, basically it's just, it's just a top really but you can just sort of see here can't you that crystallization happening i always wipe around in here with a good rag to clean everything up and the same is true here but you can see there's there's always a little bit of spillage um and uh, and that you know you, i try and avoid I definitely try and avoid getting into here because it is actually slightly corrosive uh to aluminium uh so i'm going to move the camera now so you can see the process of filling up and then we'll we'll start again i guess now there's nothing complicated about this process um obviously this this has got a top on it and you you, you, you just remove the top as you would any other top uh, and this device uh, has got a little stopper in it and you screw it onto the outside uh, and there are a number of different types of these sorts of things this isn't my favorite one the my favorite one is one that you pull up um and and sort of it clicks in the open position but in here you've got a pipe like an air pipe and what that does is it allows you to screw this onto here as you do like this um and this is why i recommend recommend buying just one of these uh and then maybe if you wanted to go with the bigger stuff buy the bigger stuff as well afterwards and i'll explain why in a second so this is basically fitted onto here but this uh, they've just reduced the price at Volkswagen the last one I bought was $27 for this and they've now reduced it to 11 so for they've not they've massively cut the price in this and the big one there was something like $30 uh, now I'll explain to you why I'm not going to why I don't use those and I use these basically what happens is that now you've screwed this on here as best you can the air pipe comes up and it, you can just sort of see it up here it sits in in the top and as you push this down uh the fluid disappears out of here i don't know whether you can just see that drain you might be able to hear it and this disappears into your def tank pretty much just like that really now the air pipe that pipe that i was telling you about that comes up here and it allows the air out of the tank to come into here so that it doesn't splosh and gurgle and, and make a mess everywhere because those splashes and gurglings are actually uh air trying to come out past them i'm sure you've had the same sort of thing when you fill up the uh the screen wash here um 
because that has the same problem the air coming out has nowhere to go and it sort of blurps the stuff in but because def is this potentially messy stuff uh the they try so that you don't do that basically is <laughs> basically what happens um so anyway so it keeps it all contained and away you go now at this point this is empty uh and it's all done but uh you'll notice from what we wanted in there mine said it, you could fill up two gallons and this is only two liters so that's not going to fill it now because these are so expensive what i do at this point is i uh, i only buy one of these i actually have one in the in the thing here and i'm going to show you this only for purposes of demonstration but uh, what i do then is instead of trying to pour that a whole big thing into this spout which would be obviously messy because uh, it doesn't contain this little air pipe to let that come out what what i then do is i take this off and it's relatively mess free but I do have this little top just on hand so that when you take it off nothing drops out just pop that back on to stop dust and dirt getting in here and potentially getting in there and then uh, I cut the top off the, well not the top off but uh, I cut a bit of that off there as well I'm just going to pop that on here while I go about cutting this hole and then uh, and then I'll show you how we go about the next part now I'm one of those people that actually actively likes the smell of this stuff it reminds me of farming back in the UK but uh, well farming anywhere I would imagine but it reminds me of when I farm back home uh, now what I've done is I've just cut a very rough hole in the top of this uh, you can cut whatever size you like you could cut the the, the entire top of this off uh, and the reason I haven't is because uh, when you're using this particular uh, style of of filler um he says not taking the top off when you use this particular kind of uh filler bottle um you have to push down like this uh to get the fluid out some of them you pull up and it sort of clicks in place and then you can sort of pour in but because you've got to push this one down you kind of don't want a sharp edge on the outside if that makes sense so it's nice on the fingers the other reason is that when i poke the the filler thing from the pump into it um it, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a splash back every now and then and and so you want a smaller hole here as possible so that it doesn't splash all over your car and so now we've done that and you've got your thing installed uh, what we can then do is we can use this device well not this particular thing but i just wanted to mention when you buy these they come with these things and you can fit this straight down that hole this goes straight into that hole but you can see the problem with this particular funnel affair is that it's actually there's nowhere for the air to come out and that's when you get those potential splashes But in this case i'm going to use it because it'll allow me to use it like a funnel like you know like a spout uh, so filling this up requires you to pop that on there i believe uh, in my experience with these sorts of things it is better if you pour like that rather than how you might be intended to like that because there's nowhere for the air to go if you pour this way hoping you can see this if you pour this way like that what happens is that the air can come in the top of here and then back into the top of the jug without being obscured by the fluid that you you know you're trying to pour in so then just pour in another well what will be two liters and you can see there's no glug in here i mean there's a bit of glug in but it's the air is going back into the back into the the two gallon container without splashing and splashing around and then you can just when you get near to the top you can see it climb up the this thing here and there you go and now because you've done this what we can do now uh, is we can just i always cover this up with me and with a cloth because i don't want anything debris getting in here because as it goes into here if there's dust or anything it'll take it with it so now we just hold it down and it'll disappear back into the tank again 
uh, and because this is breathable obviously it'll it'll just go um it'll just suck air through the top like this now when i store this i've got a little plastic carrier bag and i just store it oh yeah we're still going it had just stopped making a noise <laughs> and i was beginning to get a bit antsy that it had filled up past it just say it takes two gallons in the thing and we've only put in two litres and four litres now but, um, so I just cover it up and uh, put, put a little cloth over it and then put it in the carrier bag and then I put the carrier bag and the whole thing in, in that white cabinet that's usually in the corner uh, and that is basically it that's how that's refilled um, now DEF has a shelf life uh, and it doesn't like to be stored as I mentioned it doesn't like to be stored in in hot weather uh, and it degrades over time um, so don't buy some and then store it because it doesn't like doing that either I have just noticed there's been because I didn't I haven't bought you know they've bought this car used but obviously whoever it has had it before and filled it up and must have just spilled a bit in here um, so it doesn't like to be stored for very long periods of time and it doesn't really like to be uh, doesn't really like to be used at all in that in that sort of sense so you have to uh buy fresh each time and that is the reason that i use the pump because the pump the ufa at the pump there the pump at the ufa there uh, that's renewed i don't know once every couple of weeks or something when they run out and then it allows me to be sure that the the product is 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 brand new and, and not i mean i don't know how long that all this has been stored okay now now we're back in the car and we've I've dropped the bonnet so you can get a bit more light in here but you could leave the bonnet open we just scroll through those settings again until you find the uh, the appropriate setting for uh the service information which is under vehicle information and then you scroll down uh to next service and as you click on that now you'll see that there's no refill required and the diesel exhaust fluid range to empty is now 6400 kilometers like i mentioned to you before i'm not a big fan of overfilling these things uh, and so I, if anything i underfill them but it does seem to work in half gallon increments which means that technically speaking you, you, there is the potential of overfilling if you're not just awfully careful so um i always put a little bit less in than the requisite amount uh, just to be safe uh, and not sorry because as I said if you do overfill it it is a bit of a drama so that's basically all there is to it uh, buy yourself one of these smaller smaller half gallon things they do make some funnels that you can buy online uh, I know there's a number of them kicking about this one uh, the one that's very similar to this that's, that's mooching about England is I found it quite expensive it was 60 something quid uh is basically this um and i don't know whether you pull it or push it i don't know how it works but it's basically this and it doesn't come with any df so uh, this is my mechanism now i should tell you that the other one that i have uh i actually drilled a hole in the end with one of those big uh, hole saws which made a, a nicer job than i've done it i did mine with my knife but uh the hole saw was a was a good job the downside to the hole saw was that it ended up with little bits of of plastic in in here and i didn't want that in the in the the car so i ended up then having to blow it out uh with a with the airline after i'd washed it um which wasn't terrible but it it was an extra step that i didn't want to do today um and it, and it was a bit messy because of course i had to blow out not that i care about it on the floor of the car on the floor of the garage but you know what i'm trying to say any road so um so basically that's it buy yourself one of these and you can buy yourself one of them if you like the the big uh two gallon affairs or you can do what i do which is go down to your uh your, your garage and buy it from there now i should mention to you that the land rovers are picky about the quality of def you use i have mentioned to you that it needs to concord to um whatever it is iso 2200 and something or other or whatever it says on it um i can't find it now oh here we are look a 22241 stroke one so these do concord to that some garages don't uh by four cores i mean garages you know the kind of petrol station thing 
where I live in, in Lethbridge, because it's, it's next door to Murica, we don't have much in the way of diesels at all. Um, and two of my parts stores don't carry DEF at all. And out of six of the garages that I've been to in Lethbridge, the four courts, the Shell and the, those kinds of places, out of six that I've been to, none of those have it either. Uh, either in a, in, in a gallon container or in the smaller container or anything. So uh, the reason I go to UFA is because they have cheaper diesel and they also have DEF and it's also the right quality but the reason I'm mentioning this to you is because many forecourts sell a cheaper product and don't keep their DEF tanks clean um, the UFA in town has, has got quite a good reputation for, for clean uh, and high quality DEF so, and diesel for that matter so I use them um, so what that is as I'm trying to say is be careful if you're going to use uh, a product from a from a garage or whatever make sure that it does meet uh iso 22241-1 uh and if you are going to fill up at a pump make sure they have a good reputation for for good quality df if you fill it up with poorer quality def well you end up getting particulates and dust and debris in there the land rover may decide to tell you that it's running on uh what does the error say low quality diesel exhaust fluid detected um, and they usually give you 200 kilometers to resolve this it takes the dealer uh, to have it reset but you'll you'll have noticed that seeing as my dealer's 300 miles away giving me a 200 kilometer range isn't going to help me out here um, if it does detect that and if you don't take it to a dealer uh, it will shut the car down at the side of the road you can't reset it from what i can gather it's your gap tool won't fix it either won't clear that error message i've never had it come up so i can't tell but i'm generally told that it doesn't uh there are no smaller proprietary sort of um uh tools uh to that you can use to clear that message some of the bigger more powerful tools the land rover tools will clear it but you're going to have to pay several thousand dollars for those um gap uh the the 2d tool from gap the bluetooth one that i have when i had approached them about it they did tell me they were working on what they called subordinate functions and gap tool are uh get the gap tool does have support in some small way for this vehicle so you can clear error messages you can reset things you can alter the size of tires and there are a few other bits and bobs that you can do with it um but the the a lot of the functionality that you would experience on the l322s and the l320s and the lr3s and so on as well uh, that there it, it's not there yet they, they do tell me they're coming there so that's uh basically that's it i do hope those have been useful for you that video those videos that video has been useful for you uh, please do let me know if there's something else that you'd like me to cover i'm more than happy to have some recommendations and see if i can help you out in any way i can um i'm going to record another couple of short videos and with any luck uh that'll be a couple of things that you'll get while i'm writing these academic works that i've got <laughs> to get involved in so thank you very much for tuning in to Sherlock 2000's YouTube channel uh, and we'll see you next time cheerio